in what we call the Big Bang. In a fraction of a second, the universe underwent a violent expansion, sending space hurtling outward. Space has been expanding ever since. For decades, most scientists thought that expansion must be slowing down thanks to the pull of gravity. When I toss a, an apple up, the gravity of the Earth eventually stops it and brings it back. And just like the apple slows down with time, so too the universe should have been slowing down in its expansion because of the gravitational attraction of all matter and energy for all other matter and energy. But that raised the question, what is the ultimate fate of the cosmos? Would space go on expanding forever? Or would gravity eventually stop space from expanding, causing it to collapse back on itself in a big crunch? To solve this mystery, two teams of astronomers set out to measure the slowing of the expansion using a novel tool. Exploding stars called supernovas. So a supernova is a star that ends its life in a massive explosion. Uh, they're extremely luminous. Uh, they can be as bright as a billion suns. What makes supernova great is that they're very similar when they explode. They all get to about the same brightness and then they fade away in just about the same way. Because the explosions are so bright and uniform, the teams reasoned that these supernovas would act as very precise cosmic beacons, allowing them to track how the expansion of space has slowed over time. The trouble is, supernovas are extremely rare. To find enough of them, Perlmutter spent years calling astronomers around the globe, begging for time on their telescopes. We needed the biggest telescopes in the world. We needed perfect conditions. And in those perfect conditions, I would be calling people up at the middle of their night when they're trying to do some serious work. And I'd be saying, I know that you have a very busy schedule, but by any chance, if you could just squeeze in this half hour observation, it would, it would really uh, be very interesting to us. When they finally had enough data to chart how much the pull of gravity was slowing the expansion of the universe, they were in for a surprise. The results looked a little bit strange. They didn't really show any slowing of the universe at all. Very surprising. Actually, a universe that's actually speeding up. It was as though space, which we really thought was nothing, actually had an inherent springiness to it. And so uh, space did not want to be compressed. Space actually wants to push the universe apart. It looked like the universe was expanding faster and faster with time, accelerating rather than decelerating. My immediate response was, I have to figure out why this is wrong. This can't be right. But it was right. And most scientists converged on one explanation. There's something that fills space and counteracts the pull of ordinary, attractive gravity, pushing galaxies apart and stretching the very fabric of the cosmos. This mysterious substance filling space has been dubbed dark energy. And it's turned our picture of the universe upside down. Over the largest distances, dark energy dominates the contents of the universe. And we don't know what it is. If you do sort of a survey, a census of all the energy in the universe, dark energy turns out to be about 70% of the universe. And up until a decade ago, nobody imagined such stuff even existed. So, in essence, the weight of empty space itself is 70% of the weight of the entire universe. That's roughly the same percentage of Earth's surface that's covered by water. Imagine we didn't know what water is. That's where we stand with dark energy. We're really clueless about how to explain it. We have all of this fancy scientific apparatus of quantum mechanics and relativity and particle physics that we've developed in the last hundred years. And none of that works to explain dark energy. And the discovery of dark energy held another surprise. 
the idea that the universe contains such an ingredient had actually been cooked up 80 years earlier. I'll let you in on a little secret. Although he didn't call it dark energy, long ago Albert Einstein predicted that space itself could exert a force that would drive galaxies apart. You see, shortly after discovering his general theory of relativity, his theory of gravity, Einstein found that according to the mathematics, the universe would either be expanding or contracting. But it couldn't hover at a fixed size. This was puzzling because before they knew about the Big Bang, most scientists, including Einstein, pictured the universe as static, eternal and unchanging. When Einstein's equations suggested an expanding or contracting universe, not the static universe everyone believed in, he had a problem. So Einstein went back to his equations and modified them to allow for a kind of anti-gravity that would infuse space with an outward push, counteract an usual inward pull of gravity, allowing the universe to stand still. He called the modification the cosmological constant. Adding the cosmological constant rescued his equations. But the truth is, Einstein had no idea if this outward push or anti-gravity really existed. The introduction of the cosmological constant by Einstein was not a very elegant solution to try to find what he was looking for, a stationary universe. It achieves this effect of anti-gravity. It, it says that gravity sometimes can behave in such a way as not to pull things together, but to push things apart. Like the clash of two titans, the cosmological constant and the pull of ordinary matter could hold the universe in check and keep it static. But about a dozen years later, the astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered the universe is not static. It's expanding due to the explosive force of the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. That meant Einstein's original equations no longer had to be altered. And so suddenly, the need for a cosmological constant went right out the window. Thank you. You're welcome. Einstein is said to have called this his biggest blunder. But here's the thing. With the recent discovery that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, scientists are convinced that there is something in space that is pushing things apart. So 70 years later, Einstein's biggest blunder may rank among his greatest insights. It was something that nobody else was thinking about. But it might be that Einstein's cosmological constant is the key to understanding the expansion of the universe as we see it today. Though no one knows what dark energy actually is, it raises an astounding and troubling possibility. Einstein pictured the strength of his anti-gravity as constant. But is the strength of dark energy constant? And what if it changes over time? The answer could overturn everything we thought we knew about the fate of the cosmos. At the moment, everything in our world, from the molecules making up my body to the molecules making up the moon, is held together by forces that overwhelm the outward push of dark energy. And that's why we don't see things expanding in our everyday lives. But that situation might not last forever. In one scenario, dark energy will continue to push the galaxies farther and farther apart until ultimately they'd be pushed so far apart that the universe would become a cold, dark, and lonely place. In another scenario, the strength of dark energy might increase over time, becoming so strong that it would tear apart everything within the galaxies, from stars, to planets, to matter of all kinds. If the dark energy grows with time, then ultimately even atoms 
will get ripped apart when there's enough dark energy between the nuclei and the electrons to rip space apart. The big rip. Our picture of space has gone through a remarkable transformation. Back in Newton's time, space was just the container. It didn't do anything at all. Then through Einstein, space begins to affect how objects move. Then with Casimir, literally objects can be pushed by the activity even in empty space. And now through the ideas of Higgs and dark energy, the very expansion of the universe may be coming from the energy of empty space itself. I don't think anybody would have thought that space would have this kind of rich and profound impact on the nature of reality. But as far as we've come, the journey that began with Isaac Newton's picture of space as something like a stage is not yet finished. As we examine the fabric of the cosmos ever more closely, we may well find far more surprises than anyone ever imagined. Take me, for example. I seem real enough, don't I? Well, yes. But surprising new clues are emerging that everything, you and I and even space itself, may actually be a kind of hologram. That is, everything we see and experience, everything we call our familiar three-dimensional reality, may be a projection of information that's stored on a thin, distant, two-dimensional surface. Sort of the way the information for this hologram is stored on this thin piece of plastic. Now, holograms are something we're all familiar with, from the security symbol you find on most credit cards. But the universe is a hologram? That's one of the most drastic revisions to our picture of space and reality ever proposed. And the evidence for it comes from some of the strangest realms of space, black holes. This is a real disconnect and it's very hard to get your head around. Modern ideas coming from black holes tell us that reality is two-dimensional that the three-dimensional world the full-bodied three-dimensional world is a kind of image of a hologram on the boundary of the region of space this is a very strange thing when i was a younger physicist i would have thought any physicist who said that was absolutely crazy Here's a way to think about this. Imagine I took my wallet and threw it into a black hole. What would happen? We used to think that since nothing, not even light, can escape the immense gravity of a black hole, my wallet would be lost forever. But it now seems that may not be the whole story. Recently, scientists exploring the math describing black holes made a curious discovery. Even as my wallet disappears into the black hole, a copy of all the information it contains seems to get smeared out and stored on the surface of the black hole in much the same way that information is stored in a computer. So, in the end, my wallet exists in two places. There's a three-dimensional version that's lost forever inside the black hole, and a two-dimensional version that remains on the surface as information. The information content of all the stuff that fell into that black hole can be expressed entirely in terms of just the outside of the black hole. The idea then is that you can capture what's going on inside the black hole by referring only to the outside. And in theory, I could use the information on the outside of the black hole to reconstruct my wallet. And here's the truly mind-blowing part. 
space within a black hole plays by the same rules as space outside a black hole or anywhere else. So if an object inside a black hole can be described by information on the black hole surface, then it might be that everything in the universe, from galaxies and stars to you and me, even space itself, is just a projection of information stored on some distant two-dimensional surface that surrounds us. In other words, what we experience as reality may be something like a hologram. Is the three-dimensional world an illusion in the same sense that a hologram is an illusion? Perhaps. I think, I'm inclined to think, yes, that the three-dimensional world is a kind of illusion and uh, that the ultimate precise reality is the two-dimensional reality at the surface of the universe. This idea is so new that physicists are still struggling to understand it. But if it's right, just as Newton and Einstein completely changed our picture of space, we may be on the verge of an even more dramatic revolution. For something that's such a vital part of our everyday lives, space remains kind of like a familiar stranger. It's all around us, but we're still far from having unmasked its true identity. That may take a hundred years, it may take a thousand years, or it may happen tomorrow. But when we solve that mystery, we'll take a giant step toward fully understanding the fabric of the cosmos.